Hey North Cross family, my name is Ben and I wanted to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving, no matter where you may be or whoever you may be with. We're so thankful that you joined us for this special Thanksgiving event. And in just a few moments, I'm gonna have a chance to share with you a special Thanksgiving message. And then afterwards, Seth and Jenna Herlick are with us and they're gonna lead all of us in a Thanksgiving worship song. But before that, you may have noticed that I have a special guest with me today. Um, she also happens to be one of the most important people in my life. In case you've never had a chance to meet her, let me introduce you to my wife, Carrie. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to you all. So a few weeks ago, Carrie and I were talking about things that we're thankful for and blessings we've seen in this crazy upside down year. And one of the things we started talking about, I was like, Carrie, you have to share that with everyone on Thanksgiving. And so here we are. Carrie? Yes, we were thinking about all the things from Thanksgiving and just the different events and uh, services that we've had. And we haven't been able to be surrounded by our family because they're scattered all over the, the states. And so our church family has been one of our biggest blessings for us. And just, you know, looking back at the opportunities to be able to celebrate together, to worship together, to pray together has been such a gift for us. So we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for just the blessings that you have been to us, for the generosity that you've shown to our family and the prayers, all of it. Thank you very, very much. I know that the rest of the North Cross staff feels the exact same way. Uh, even when your regular family might be far away, there is nothing like the support and the love and the care of a church family united by Christ. And so, again, thank you to all of you. Now, before we get into the message for today, why don't we all uh, take a moment to bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that you have promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And in a crazy upside down year like we're in, help us to just pause today whether it be in this message or the song or afterwards as we gather with family or maybe for some of us all by ourselves. We just pray that you would remind us of the blessings that you've given to us and help us every day to live in gratitude and thankfulness for the big blessings that are so obvious to see and even for the little ones that sometimes get ignored. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, this year, especially this year. This year, more than ever. Not because it wasn't so bad. Not because next year will be better. Not because some good things happened. Not even just because God says so. Rejoice in the Lord, you people of the Lord, because Christ is Lord. This is the year of the Lord's favor. This is the year of God's grace. Again, we are still the redeemed, still ransomed by the blood, still furiously convinced, especially this year, that neither life, nor death, nor pandemic, nor lockdown, nor masks, nor isolation, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We will give thanks this year not in spite of what was lost, but because of what cannot be. We'll rejoice in the Lord because we are the people of the Lord. Let's do more than count our blessings. Let's count ourselves among the blessed. I'll say it again, rejoice. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. As we get started today, I'm gonna to make a couple guesses about your day today. My first guess is that most of you probably are going to eat some turkey at some point today. And if not turkey, then probably ham. Um, the other thing I'm guessing is that for most of you, at some point during the day, whether you're watching it or not, that there's gonna be football on the TV screen, wherever you might be. 
Now, some of you maybe know that the Dallas Cowboys, that team that many love to love and even more love to hate, tend to be one of the teams that always plays on Thanksgiving. And I wanted to share with you a play in their history that has particular significance to my devotion today. Now, it didn't happen on Thanksgiving Day, but it happened in the 1993 Super Bowl. The Dallas Cowboys had this big defensive lineman named Leon Lett. And in the fourth quarter, the Buffalo Bills fumbled the football, and guess what happened? Leon Lett found himself holding the football with nothing in front of him except a clear path to the end zone. And so he starts running. And I'm imagining that in his mind, he's thinking about how this is going to be something that he's going to be able to celebrate forever, scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And so he gets to about the 10-yard line, and there's still no one in front of him. And so he starts to celebrate even before he gets into the end zone. He kind of slows down his run. He uh, puts the football out to his side a little bit. What he didn't know is that all the time that he had been running, so was a fast wide receiver from the Buffalo Bills named Don Beebe. And right before Leon Lett made it into the end zone, guess what happened? You can probably guess if you didn't see it. Don Beebe caught him, knocked the ball out of his hand, Leon Lett fumbled, and he was not able to score a touchdown. See, here's the thing that happened for Leon Lett. He was so focused on what was ahead of him that he became unaware of what was behind him. And that's not only an important thing to remember when you get a football in your hand in the Super Bowl and running towards the end zone that you better be aware of what's behind you. It's also a really important thing in life. The importance of being aware of what's behind you. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today on this Thanksgiving. Let's be real. Um, this Thanksgiving is not what we had expected we'd experience a year ago. There's so much different and a lot of things that probably we're disappointed about. In fact, for some of you, maybe because of COVID, you're not even with some of the people that you would normally be with. And as we think about the future, as we think about what's ahead of us, there's a lot of things that are unknown. Um, we don't know the status of the economy over the next year or five, the status of businesses, or maybe it's your job, or the status of what school is going to look like, or sports in the new year. There's just so many things about what's ahead of us that are unknown. And what I want you to recognize, what the big idea is for this message today, and Leon Lett, if you're watching today, I apologize that I'm using you as an example, but the big idea is this, that an awareness of what's behind you will help you better frame what's ahead of you. An awareness of what is in the past, of what's behind us, will help us to better frame what's coming in the future, what's ahead of us. We need to be aware and cognizant of the past. Now, for me to talk to you more about this today, I'm going to turn to a book in the Old Testament called Deuteronomy. It's a big word, hard to say, but what it is is a collection of three sermons that Moses preached right towards the end of his life. And the context is this, that the children of Israel were just getting done completing 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And let me just say this, that when you're living the desert life, you are certainly not living your best life. And there was a lot of things going on in the desert that made life difficult. Um, as an example, uh, food was really hard to come by. Water was hard to come by. They didn't have uh, homes to live in. They were kind of nomadic uh, during those years. And through all of it, God remained with them. Let me give you some examples of how they would see God with them every day. So 
food was hard to come by? Well, God made it happen that every morning, except for Saturday, when they woke up, there would be essentially flakes of bread all over the ground. Just think of that. Every morning you wake up and there's frosted flakes all over the ground. They tasted like honey. There were wafers that tasted like honey. And in fact, this was so weird for them, just like it would be for us, that some of you know this, they named the frosted flakes manna, which in Hebrew means, what is it? I have no idea what this is, honey, but we're going to eat it because it's free. God put it there and it tastes okay. Uh, every single day that was there. Um, for meat, God made it happen that every evening a flock of quail would come to their campsite and they'd have as much as they needed to eat. At times when there was no water, they would hit a rock. Think about that. And God made water come out of a rock. The one that I love the most, but I know that Carrie, who you met earlier, probably wouldn't, is that God made it happen that their clothes did not wear out for the entire 40 years that they were in the wilderness. So for those of you who are trying to keep up with all the fashion trends, not probably something that you would have enjoyed, but for me who just wants some clothes that work, I mean, what an amazing blessing. Now, as Moses writes about all of this, he shares with the people a reason why God allowed for the children of Israel to have to go through those 40 years of wandering and also his reason for giving them manna. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It says, God humbled you. God's, or Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. God humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Right there at the beginning, Moses said to the people, God did this to humble you. Why did the Israelites need humbling? Because they're people. And people like the Israelites, people like you and like me, we all have the natural tendency, if we're not careful, to be very self-centered, self-sufficient, self-dependent, and prideful. And in the midst of these 40 years of wandering, God wanted to teach them something about dependency on Him. I like how one pastor said it. He said that as the Israelites were in the desert, they wanted to get out of the desert. And what God wanted was for them to take something out of the desert. They just wanted to get out of there. God wanted to teach them. And this brings me to something that is maybe really hard to hear, and yet very important for us to think about, not only on Thanksgiving, but, but always. That your greatest growth will often come out of your greatest hardship. Let me say that again. Your greatest growth opportunities will almost always come not out of your greatest and best seasons of life, but out of the greatest hardships of life. There's purpose in it. You know, the Israelites were in the desert, I, I did some math, for over 14,000 days. And every day, they got a first-hand look at that it was God who was taking care of them. Every morning, they got up, and there was, what is it, on the ground, they knew that God was still with them. Every time they needed something to eat and God allowed a flock of quail to come to the camp, they were reminded that God doesn't forget his people. Every day as they walked and 30, 40 years into their journeying, they were still wearing the same blue jeans and sweatshirt. Okay, maybe not that, but whatever clothes they were wearing, 
they were being reminded just as sort of the clothes were able to stay um, unworn, that God was faithfully not just taking care of the clothes, but he was faithfully taking care of them. It's amazing to see how God can use some of our most difficult seasons to bring about the greatest growth. So I wonder, what about you? I know things aren't the way we want them to be this year. Um, this entire year, I wouldn't mind if uh, we never thought about it again. And it's okay to pray that God would end all the stuff we're going through and that life could get back to some sense of normal. If that's what you're praying, keep praying it. I am too. But let us not be so quick to try to get out of the desert that we forget to take something out of the desert with us. What have you seen in you and in God during this season? What lessons have you learned? You know, I think one of the things God's taught me about is control. Uh, I tend to be someone that likes to uh, be in control. That's why I like to drive whenever my family is going somewhere. But I've found that I don't even know what Christmas is going to look like, much less the next couple of years. I have far less control than I, I thought I did. And that's a good lesson to learn. Another thing is trust. I know that I have issues with self-dependency and self-sufficiency. And just like the Israelites, God has taught me that even though sometimes the future might be blurry, what does trust really mean? It doesn't mean that I do my part to help God along. Trust means that I just need to surrender and realize that God has a plan that might be different than mine. Um, the third thing that I was thinking of is dependency. That God has gotten me through. And it may not have been easy, but he's gotten you through too. He's still with us, just like manna every morning. And his faithfulness has taught us that we can depend on him in every season. So now, in our text, the Israelites are now, as Moses preaches, ready to end those 40 years of wandering, and they're kind of on the, the border of the promised land. They're ready to, to go in. And in the new land, let me tell you, it was going to be entirely different. It um, was described as being a land flowing with milk and honey, which when I was a kid, that just boggled my mind. Um, milk and honey flowing. Um, what it means is that it would be a lush, lavish place with all the natural resources that the Israelites would ever want or ever imagine. And in that moment, as they're about to go there, as they're sort of straddling the line between the wilderness and the promised land, listen to what Moses tells the Israelites. Verse 10, when you have eaten and are satisfied, when you get into the promised land, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful. Be careful that you don't forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, someday, in the promised land, very soon, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Do you know the Israelite story? That's exactly what happened. Things got better, and they forgot. In fact, if you look over the Israelites' history, Israel's history, in the moments where things were bad, they turned to God. In the moments when things were good, they forgot about him. This thing that Moses warned the Israelites about, he warned them for good reason. He knew that in times of plenty, 
It's easy to be self-sufficient and self-dependent and to think that we are so great. But all along, Moses says, don't forget it is God who provides. It is God who is with you every step of the way. I think Moses knew, for sure God did, that we all have the tendency to focus on ourselves and our strength and our abilities. So verse 17, Moses says, You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Isn't it interesting, once again, that our tendency is when things are going well to forget about God and when things are going bad to blame Him. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but this is what we do. Verse 18, But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. If your family is anything like mine, Thanksgiving tends to be a time of remembrance. And we go around the table and we thank God for certain things and you you might think about uh, a person, an event, um, some blessings that God gave you this year. And um, this year might be a little bit different with that. It might be actually even sometimes a, a little bit harder. But I'd like to change your mindset just for a moment. I want to focus on what Moses said. It's not really this year remembering the what we have. It's remembering the who who gave it. Here's my encouragement. As you have a very, in some ways, unclear future, and as you think of what's behind you, Don't forget to remember the Lord your God. When you're wandering in the desert and you're sick of wearing the same clothes for 40 years, don't forget to remember the Lord your God. When you're feeling overwhelmed by the heaviness of life and another shutdown and sports being taken away and your plans for your business or for your next few months totally changed and very fuzzy right now, don't forget to remember the Lord your God. When things get better, and I think they will, when things get better and life gets back to some semblance of normal, don't forget to remember the Lord your God. When your head is filled with worry or frustration or fear or anger, Don't forget to remember the Lord, your God. You know, it's it's interesting how Israel's story really intersects with ours. Um, God has not promised you and me in 21st century America some promised land that's going to be flowing with milk and honey. There is no such promise for us. But it is interesting, though, that when we think of what God promised Israel in this section, that promised land, our story does intersect because the greatest blessing that Israel would receive is the same one the world would receive. Not the promised land itself, but what would come out of the promised land. Jesus, our Savior. The one who delivers us from all that this world can throw at us Not necessarily making our lives better here on earth, but ultimately delivering us to our real home, the true promised land. And he did that, as you know, with his death in our place and his resurrection, his victory over the grave. Now, as I I wrap this up this morning, I'm wondering, have you ever heard of the series of children's illustrated books called Where's Waldo? They came out when um, I think I was in grade school. And if 
you don't know anything about them. Like I said, they're illustrated books. There's really not many words in them. But Waldo is this uh, guy who has um, beady eyes and round glasses. He's got this stocking cap and a shirt that's uh, red and white striped, and he's wearing um, blue jeans. And the entire book is just a bunch of drawings. And what you do as a kid, or maybe for some of you as an adult, you look at these pages and it's illustrated, everything's all jumbled and there's lots of objects there. And, and what you want to do is try to see if you can find where Waldo is on the page. And sometimes it's really easy. Other times it's really complicated and really difficult. But here's the thing. No matter whether it's easy or hard, Waldo's always there. You just need to look for him. He's always there with those round glasses and the red and white striped sweater. And in a very real way, that's our story. That's your story, that's mine. Not that we can find Waldo in our past, but instead that the Lord is always there. And in some seasons, maybe it's real easy to see him and what he's up to. And in other seasons, maybe the one that you're in now, it's a little bit harder and we don't quite understand and life seems a little bit jumbled and it's just challenging. But I want you to know, he's still there. Just like he took care of the Israelites in the wilderness, he's going to take care of you and I as well. How long will this weird season last? What's in store for us in the new year? I'm not sure. But what I'm thankful for on this Thanksgiving day, what I hope that you are thankful for after spending some time in this section, is knowing that God will always be there, just like he has been. And an awareness of what's behind you will help to frame what's ahead of you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. Dear Lord, I, I don't know all the things that are going on in the lives of the, the people who have gathered with me today online, but you do. You know perfectly. And I, I just pray that you give them evidence in their life of your presence, whether it be a strength that could only come from you, whether it's a change of circumstance that they've been hoping for and praying for. Ultimately, Lord, Point us this day to your son, Jesus, the one who has given us the deliverance that we need the most. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. He's more than a
You're working in the way Though the future isn't clear to me I trust you anyway Why do I work? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? God knows what I need. Why do I worry? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? God knows what I need. Why do I worry? Why do I Thanks, Seth and Jenna. Well, we hope you enjoyed this Thanksgiving event. And before you leave the room that you're watching this in, maybe you could take a couple seconds to discuss with the people you are watching with a couple questions about the message for today. The first question is this, in what specific ways has God taught you to depend on him this year? The second question, what are some things that you can do to better remember God's past faithfulness. If you are brand new to North Cross, we are super excited that you are able to join us today. And I want to let you know that every Sunday we have an online service. It streams uh, live at 9 a.m. and then is available on demand after that, and you can access it on our webpage. I know that there are a lot of things this year that are out of the ordinary. But as I leave you for today, I want you to remember this simple truth. Remember the Lord your God. Happy Thanksgiving.